Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Good day. Oh, good, good. Here we are. We're ready to go then. Once again. I can hear you loud and clear. Alhamdulillah. And five by five from my side towards you also. <laughs> likewise, <laughs> likewise. What a pleasure. Pleasure. I thought I was going to miss you this week. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. How was Atlanta? Atlanta was special. Uh -huh. How they used to say that kind of dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> um, I brought some dynamite with me. Okay, good, but, good, uh, yeah. I only blew up I, what was necessary. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's we're we're kind of in that process, but we got to rebuild what is being deconstructed. Yeah. So if we do the deconstruction, then we got to reconstruct. You only have to, you can't have one without the other. Otherwise, no, it's no, not no. much purpose now, is it? No, and we're in a tremendous period of deconstruction, but it's necessary. Yes, it is. Yeah. Inshallah, inshallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So, um, let us, let us explore something that's not divorced from divine order. I still like this theme. I like to return to it. Again, divine order, divine order. And we'll eventually define it, I'm sure. Um, but um, along the way, we have a fair amount of deconstruction to do. And part of that is um, this idea of uh, fatalism. And um, I like to compare and contrast that, if I will, uh, if I may, uh, with um, a destiny, achieving one's destiny versus achieving one's fate. Now, I have an hypothesis is a working hypothesis and um, that um, you, know, you know they are not equivalent okay I suppose if you want to get really mm, fanciful and philosophical here you could probably make them equivalent you know, in, in, in some way if you want to turn and twist things around but I, I like to think of it as a, the same coin okay uh, with respect to what happens in the end. There's always going to be a consequence uh, to to something, you know, with the laws of physics or laws of energy, you know, uh, something, there's a cause and then there's a consequence, there's a cause and a consequence. Well, we're affecting, we're effectively living causes of our own consequences. Not that we determine the consequences. These are the things that are predetermined, okay? If you do X, Y and Z are definitely going to happen. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. uh, there are laws that are like that and they're, they're irrefutable. And um, uh, I don't want to waste time going into to that aspect of it. But we determine the outcomes of our um, actions. Okay. We determine them. The, the outcomes themselves are kind of fixed in a certain sense. They're fixed. Now, I like to think of it as, you know, the, the, you, you, you have this archetypical pattern of a guy walking down a, 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 what appears to be a single highway, and then it departs. There's a byway in front of him. It's a, you know, he either goes left or he goes right. One is destiny, one is his fate. Mm. Okay, that's how I look at it. Okay, now I'm still working hypothetically here. So, and what I'm hoping is that Nunetics and Akran will um, either prove or disprove or amend my hypotheses as as per whatever the truth is that we can extract from it using Nunetics. You see, so this is my hypothesis. Okay, you got destiny, you got fate. Now, if you are, um, I don't want to say Boy Scout, but if you are the righteously minded individual with the correct knee and you kept on you keep on correcting yourself as you walk along and slip and fall and slip and fall and you get yourself up and clean up again and then put on your sunday best and go on and do your best again eventually you're going to meet your destiny okay if you got the right knee and if you've made the correct door okay <laughs> no I, these are conditions okay you you've got to ask god for guidance you don't ask him, he's not going to give it, okay? It's just like, I mean, how, how, if you're on the way to the hot dog store with your with your friends and you only got enough money for a hot dog and not enough for that Pepsi, you know, you're going to maybe ask, hey, Dad, can I borrow a quarter? <laughs> Some, you got to go ask him, okay? You got to go ask 
uh, our source creator for the things that you need. It's not that he doesn't know yes. uh, that you need him. It's said that our source creator has set things up so that he demands relationship. He demands that we contact him. He demands this salat. Okay, if I'm understanding these terms correctly, yes. after all these years, after all these years, he demands it. Okay, so if we're meeting that demand, and it doesn't matter how incompetent we may or may not be, we got the right now, we got the right attention, we ask for guidance, and no matter where it is we are along the pecking order, we're walking on the right path and we're headed for our destiny. And your destiny might be nothing more than to lace the shoes of uh, somebody like Salahuddin before he mounts his war horse. Okay? That could be all it is that you do. <laughs> Uh, maybe you're you're fortunate enough to actually weave the sh the, the laces together, you see, before it makes it to the, to his boot. Th it doesn't matter where you are on that pecking order. What mm -hmm. matters is you're in the right place at the right time with the right people under the right guidance, doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to meet your destiny. However, now here's my hypothesis: if you're on the up the obtuse side of that coin, the other side of the coin, you're not going to meet your destiny. Because you're not in the right place doing the right Good thing point. with the right people. Good point. That, that you're going to suffer fate. Yes. Okay. Now this beautiful, is what beautiful distinction. Yeah. This is this is what I say. So I, I use <clears throat> I like to use the uh, the analogy of the the woman who gets in the car with the children with her two children uh, who whose husband is drunk, and he's the driver. You see, so they have an accident. The kids are injured or killed. Whose fault is that? The woman's. The husband's certainly not the children's fault, mm. you see, but they're along for the ride, you see. They're maybe in the right place at the right time with the wrong people, or are they in the right place with the right people who made the wrong choice? Mm. W what is it? You know, yes. they that's not a destiny they met. Why? Why do I say that? Because I can say that with uh, a fair degree of confidence, because Anu doesn't make nothing. Okay, <laughs> there's a lot of people out there trying to say you're just nothing. You're a blank sheep. We're gonna, you know, write all over on you. No, no, no. Allah makes us with sort of um, something that's already in us. This feature thing that's growing. It's got its own direction. It's got its own gifts. It's got its own methods of uh, expression. It's got its own charisma, man. Hey. I'm in the zone, and when I'm in the zone, I'm just as good as anyone else, Michael Jackson, anyone else, it doesn't matter. When they're in the zone, I'm just as good as they are. When I'm in that zone, now what's that zone? I'm doing the right thing at the right time with the right people. I mean, I'm meeting my future. This is my destiny. Alhamdulillah. All right? So I can stand there. On the other hand, we got only, where is the God of Muhammad? You see? Uh, now, I'll give you another source uh, another example of this okay so we got uh, my not, my analogy is the the drunk woman i mean uh, the lady who gets in the car with her husband who's drunk and drives off now she knows better but she still got in the car because she's under this cultural influence that she's got to be a messianic sacrifice for her husband's dignity you know this mm. stupid way of thinking um and people are submitted to it and there's a lot of is that destiny no i don't think that's fatalism you see because that is what happens when you make the wrong decisions. There are people in Yemen, I did the social study works on this. I mean, I didn't actually do the study. I edited the paper, it was a PhD thesis, was right. submitted to, uh, to another desk. But I, I edited it before, before it was submission and uh, submitted and uh, corrected. And this was a paper out of Yemen, written by one of the top uh, academics who was in Malaysia at the time, doing the social studies uh, for uh, the Yemenic authorities. They're trying to deal with the problem. And the problem is this. They got a problem with Shisha and uh, another uh, dope there called uh, Kat. G uh, K H A T, I think it's called. It's kind of like cocaine, a mild sort of uh, formula. Of it. But the people get together every week. They get the family together two, three times a week. And they have a special time of day. Everybody's come and they smoke the Shisha and they smoke the dot and they get high and they think that they're having a good time. And they are having a good time. The problem is nobody's watching the children huh. when they do this. Now, here's where fatalism comes in. This is when the emergency room visits go up during this 
party time, okay? I don't know when it, I forget when it was, five to seven or something like that, every Thursday evening, something like that. Anyway, every, the whole family gets together. That's when the emergency room uh, calls for the children to go up. And what do, the til- what do the parents do when they realize the kids are getting hurt in the absence of their supervision? They're saying it's God's will. And the government wanted the paper done to submit it to the academics to see how can we counteract this fatalism. Mm. Now, that's affecting the whole nation. That's just one example of the woman getting into the car with the drunk driving husband. Yeah. Okay. So with that having been said, dear brother, I'm sure I opened up another can of worms here, which is one of my fields of expertise, I think. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> so I'm going to hand this open can of uh, can of wiggling writhers uh, to your hand and see if you can't use them to pull something out of those water. Catch us a big fish with these with one of these yeah. bubbles. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Inshallah, I give you the talking stick with with great with great expectations, my dear Thank brother. You. Thank you. I accept. <laughs> mm-hmm. As I begin with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, inviting Allah into our conversation for quality assurance, Mm. we ask Allah that we not say anything or suggest anything that is against his will and his plan for us, and that it Mm. be pleasing to him and beneficial to our listening audience. Yes, wonderful. So we're talking about fate versus destiny. And I want to begin by saying this, that you are actually in charge of your fate, while mm-hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is responsible for your destiny. Uh, uh, there we go. I like Allah, that. Allah always places a measurable amount mm-hmm. of responsibility on the human soul. Mm-hmm. Allah says in the Quran, those of you who accept faith, Oh, those who accept faith, your own souls have obligated you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So our souls Mm -hmm. are actually obligating us to follow a particular path, a particular direction, and Mm -hmm. a particular discipline. So again, the individual is in charge of his or her own fate, while Allah ultimately is responsible for our destiny. Now, fate is when you allow circumstances to decide for you, as in the case of the riders in that vehicle, particularly Mm -hmm. the one behind the driver's wheel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the others may be incidental, Mm -hmm. but nevertheless, their fates were tied into his judgment. Mm -hmm. So fate is when you allow circumstances to decide for you, which tells us that we should be doing our best to understand our circumstances. Mm -hmm. When you're living blindly or when you're living unconsciously, you might say, then circumstances become the dictator and not you. See, we are in charge of our fate, but if you're not paying attention, then circumstances will decide that fate for you. Destiny, however, doctor, is when you take conscious control of where you would like to ultimately end up. Mm -hmm. I want our audience to think about that. Mm -hmm. Destiny is when you take conscious control. You're no longer allowing just circumstances and situations to dictate your end. Mm -hmm. But you are actually taking conscious control. You're planning your way through a particular mental, moral, spiritual discipline. And you are deciding that here, based on these activities that I'm participating in, that I'm volunteering for, I'm volunteering to be a servant of Allah. <laughs> that's 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 not a draft. <laughs> that's yes. a volunteer no. operation. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm volunteering because I have seen the ABC steps towards uh, my destiny and where Allah says I can end up is where I want to end up. So I need to follow that discipline. I need to follow those steps along the road to do what? 
to ensure that I end up at my destiny. Mm -hmm. Not at fate. I'm not guessing my way now. I'm not taking chances because Allah says, if you do this, you get that. That's not chances. That's not a crapshoot. So fate is actually a process that I believe is occurring in the subconscious mind. Fate is the subconscious default setting that's operating in the emotions, which is your subconscious mind. It's a subconscious def. In other words, if you do not take conscious control, then the default setting kicks in automatically. And the default setting is not going to be related to what you chose in the intellect. It's going to be uh, based on what you did not choose and left your uh, default setting to choose for you. And it's yes. going to be 1000% based on emotions, how you feel at the time, what your instinctive drives told you to do. And that's, that's just what that is. Now that's fate, mm. Mm. but destiny is the conscious decision-making setting that's operating in the intellect. Now I've made a clear distinction between where fate is operating. That's in the subconscious emotional mm -hmm. part of the mind and where destiny is supposed to be operating, which is in the conscious neocortex decision-making operation that Allah clocked into the intellect where you can choose when you get to that fork in the road that you were talking about, you yes. can choose to go right. Well, you can say, well, before I get to my destiny, I want to stop at the at the titty club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. You mm -hmm. understand? It's it's still of early. Course. You know, it's still early. Yeah. And I, I don't have yes, my wife yeah. with me, so I'm going to stop at the yeah. titty bar, you know, and, and yeah. you know, and yeah. get a lap dance, you know. See, these are people mm -hmm. that I'm talking about who they, they think they're on their way to their destiny. And mm -hmm. they could have been had they kept a conscious discipline control over what they were thinking. And deciding. Yes. So, so we're talking about a distinctive uh, separation between fate and um, destiny. You know, in the dictionary, if you look up these words, they're going to be interchanged with each other. You look up fate, it's going to say destiny. You look up destiny, mm -hmm. it's going to say fate, you know, because they don't know. Yes. Yes, these people yeah. are cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. These people who write many of these dictionaries, they have no clue yeah. what they're talking about. That's one of the reasons I want to have this discussion for the sake of ourselves and our listeners. Yes. Yes. I pointed out a long time ago, doctor, that uh, the dictionaries also mix up the difference between intelligence and intellect. So this is not a new yes. thing that they're doing. Yes, I think yes. many of them are purposely scrambling these meanings. It's either that or they're cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. They, I they're think just it's not combination both. I it think could it's both. be. It could be. I think it's both. Yeah. So to get the correct meanings for these terms and these ideas, we mm. need to visit the Quran. Yes, because please. the Quran is the ultimate regulator of both the emotional life as well as the mm. life of our intellect. Yes. So Allah says. And that's just a shorter phrase from a much longer ayat, but this particular part is the part that we need for our purposes. And Allah says that we should seek with all that Allah has made available to us, our home in the hereafter. Darul akhirah. Dar means home. And akhirah is translated as hereafter. Um, but it's a hereafter that actually begins based on what you do in this life. It's not all about when you close your eyes on this world in death, and then that's mm -hmm. al-akhirah. No, al-akhirah just means what comes after. After mm -hmm. what? After anything. Like tomorrow is akhirah. Mm -hmm. This evening mm -hmm. is, if it hasn't happened yet, then it's relegated to al-akhirah. Mm -hmm. So we're yeah, to seek yeah. everything that Allah has made available to us from this point forward. Is another way of saying that. From this point forward. Yes. And Allah says, however, do not neglect. And the same word for neglect is the same word for forget. Mm -hmm. Latansa. Do not neglect. Do not forget. Nasibaka minet dunya. And they translate that as your share of the material world. Yes. 
Now, your share is also called your portion. Mm -hmm. And your portion is your lot. And your lot is your fate. Can be. Mm -hmm. Can be. They say, well, he got what he called for. You know, that kind of thing. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, fate, according to the encyclopedia, is based on the notion that there is a natural order, as we've been discussing, a divine order, if you will. Mm -hmm. And it's operating in the universe, and that order cannot be changed no matter how hard we try. That's what they tell us fate is, mm -hmm. that it is. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing you can do about it. That's just your mm -hmm. predetermined lot. Mm -hmm. And I say that that is not true. It's mm -hmm. only true when you allow here, here. for that, uh, that default setting mm -hmm. to be the rule. But Allah has given us a clear choice. So what makes the choice is what you put your faith in. Mm. Think about that. Mm -hmm. What makes the choice between fate and destiny is what the intellect chooses to put its faith in. So I like to say that fate closes the door. That's yes. it. Mm -hmm. But faith opens the door. Mm -hmm. Fate slams the door shut mm -hmm. car accident argument fight gunshots stabbings being in the wrong place at the wrong time all of that is fate and fate closes the door on your future opportunities to continue doing good yes 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 and it was an emotional decision in mo most cases you got yeah. hot-headed or you were in the wrong place at the wrong time and somebody started beefing with somebody and you got in the middle of it and bam, that's it. That was your fate. That was your lot. That was your share. Or, or, or you're just trying to please someone else who's oh, manipulating you. My, my oh, goodness. My, my goodness. That's at the top of the mm -hmm. list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So fate is what closes the door, but faith is what opens the door. And I believe that the English word faith comes from the Arabic word fatiha. Mm -hmm. or fatha, which means to open. Mm -hmm. It also means to become victorious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Now, overall, fate tends to have uh, pretty negative connotations. People who experience misfortune, they often tend to believe that fate is the cause, you know, and they become pessimists. Mm -hmm. yes. And they, they speak about sealing one's fate and uh, a fate mm -hmm. worse than death. You know, they, we have these yeah, sayings yeah, in our sure. language. Mm -hmm. um, but they all suggest that fate is something undesirable and negative. Mm -hmm. But there's a spiritual aspect to this conversation on this topic. And that is, is that fate is what occurs when we ignore our life calling. Uh -huh. And when we do not actively work to reconnect our souls, mm -hmm. which is our true nature, our fitran nature, that mm -hmm. we're born with the fitran nature. There's a saying of Muhammad, the prophet, that says that every child is born upon the fitra. Mm -hmm. They yes. like to say born Muslim, but it doesn't say Muslim. It says that every yeah. child is born upon the fitra. Mm -hmm. yes. And it is his parents it is the environment beginning with his parents that make him <clears throat> something disconnected from the fitra. I'm paraphrasing yes. a little bit. <clears throat> yes, of course. All right. So we're all born spiritual. No baby is born recognizing its material substances. It's not born recognizing its face in the mirror. It's not born recognizing anything such as race, so-called mm -hmm. race or, you know, ethnicity, mm -hmm. Uh, it's not born knowing how much it weighs and all. It doesn't know anything about the material world, but it has a spiritual sense for where it is and what it should be asking for. Mm -hmm. So when it looks at its mother's and it looks at its mother in the eye, it's it's that that's a spiritual connection and that's the fitra based connection. But when we mm -hmm. lose that spiritual connection with that source, whatever we think is sustaining us, we don't know mm -hmm. to identify it as Allah or as the Lord or as God or we don't know we don't know that language. Yes, of course. So we just have an inner spiritual feeling, is what I'm saying. And as you grow older, you become disconnected from that spirit 
because mm-hmm. Allah wants you to grow into subsequent spirits and eventually mm-hmm. be linked back to the original spirit. It's it's beautiful when you understand it, Doc. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so so we, we open our eyes and we become more and more conscious of the material world. We become more and more conscious of our desires. Mm-hmm. The, or the things that we will eventually even lust after because we're growing into these energies. Yes. We're growing up the chakra ladder. We, we have to visit each one of them and we have to learn to discipline each one of those seven basic chakra energies and lust and relationships and sex and all of that. That's a, that's a serious part of that development, but we're mm-hmm. not supposed to stay there. Of course not. If you stay there, then the circumstances that are governing that energy are going to dictate to you what your life should be. Yeah, your fate. That's right. Whereas if you are conscious of the fact that I have to evolve higher than this, therefore Mm -hmm. I have to discipline this level. I have to secure my foot on this rung first before I can take my other foot off and climb up to the higher that's wrong. correct. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's what the destiny is the top of the ladder. My mm-hmm. fate is if I'm not careful where I place my feet on the way up the ladder. Yes, yes. Makes sense? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, of course. So the top of the ladder, the higher echelon of steps that I need to take are what I'm calling destiny. Mm. Climbing towards my destiny. But I first have to reconnect with the fitra. Mm. And by reconnecting with the fitra, we're simply talking about reinvestigating and respecting. Spect means to look at. So if I'm respecting, I'm looking at it again. It's going to happen. All you got to do is grow old. You're going to you're going to desire to reconnect with your original nature. When all mm-hmm. of this material world begins to seem like it's just not worth it. All mm-hmm. of the time I put into making these millions of dollars now, mm-hmm. you know, I'm about to die. Who was it? Uh, Howard Hughes. I think he died mm-hmm. with a Campbell soup can in front of him, you know. That kind yes, of thing. Right. Mm-hmm. So um, human beings are all born with souls that are connected to the cosmos and they are connected through our instinctive drives. Now I'm about to say something that's a little bit uh, on the high end of uh, science, mm-hmm. but We are all born as instinctive creatures. We want to eat. We want to be warm. We enjoy love. And all of these physical things that are a part of our biological needs. Now, that connects us to the cosmos. And what do I mean by that? That after we're born, our hair continues to grow. After we're born, our bodies continue to mature even something as dense as bone experiences growth. That's ama- That's always been amazing to me, that mm-hmm. bones grow. Mm-hmm. That's like saying the walls grow. No, <laughs> it, that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> these are parts of the miracles of Allah. Mm-hmm. See? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. like saying these stones that I built this house with are supposed to get bigger. No, they're not. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, how, are, how are my bones getting bigger? They're just mm-hmm. as dense. <laughs> yes, yeah, right. All right. So that's just something to think about when it comes to appreciating what Allah has actually done oh, for Jesus. us. Now, <clears throat> so what's causing our hair to continue to grow? The same thing that's causing the sun to rise, so to speak, and the moon to glow. You know, all of these things that we consider to be cosmic realities. The same thing that's causing all of those things to occur in the universe is the same thing that's causing our teeth to fall out and to regrow as children. It's causing our bones to grow. It's causing our blood to flow. It's causing our heart to continue beating. All of these things are part of our instinctive drives and the unconscious operation taking place in our biology. It's all because of Allah's command to be simple with it. It's all a part of Allah's command. Mm. Now, That set of instructions is geared specifically towards our survival. And that survival is clocked into our biology. It's clocked into the DNA. And it's that survival urge operating in our biology that is connected to a higher system 
that's called cosmic DNA. I don't know how many people, I, I've asked people to look that up. I don't know how many actually they have. Mm -hmm. But they say that this universe is a product of cosmic genes. Mm -hmm. They're not biologic. They're cosmic. In mm -hmm. fact, some of the older ideologies say that the universe itself is the product of a cosmic seed. I'm sure you've heard that yes. um, in more ancient ideologies than what the Western world has been introduced to. Mm -hmm. So it's the cosmic DNA that is actually communicating with your biologic DNA. And it is what continues to allow for your hair to grow. Mm -hmm. It is what continues to allow for your body to grow and develop all of the nutrients that are in the creation itself through the foods and the drink and so forth. Now, mm -hmm. our instinctive motivations, that unconscious mind that we keep talking about, those mm -hmm. instincts, the things that you don't have to think about, Allah placed them in your autonomic nervous system to do. Yes. Those motivations are to evolve into emotional and intellectual drives. See, here's where the expansion or the evolution takes place. Mm -hmm. Out of the instincts, which are basically out of our control, being controlled by the cosmos, if you will. We say by Allah, mm -hmm. everything is ultimately controlled by Allah. But just for purposes of being able to see the picture of what I'm describing, mm -hmm. just understand that your instincts, you know, the way you have to swallow and the way you have to go to the bathroom and poop and whatever else it is you do. And all of those things that are relegated to the instincts, the internal sticking, that's what an instinct mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. It's something sticking you inside. Eat, eat, man. Aren't you hungry? <laughs> you know, go poop, man. Stop holding it. She's going to be there when you get back. <laughs> mm, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So that's what we're talking about. Those motivations need to evolve up from instincts to emotions to intellect. You see that mm -hmm. journey? That's yes, headed yes. towards the destiny from mm -hmm. instinct that you're not quite. All of the way, you're in temporary control of those, you know, mm -hmm. you can fast, you know, you're in temporary control of when you eat, when you sleep, you know, but you mm -hmm. have to eat, you have to sleep, you have to drink. All right. Yes. So you go up from there and you evolve up to the emotional and the election, the intellectual levels. And then you, you supersede and overrule those instinctive drives. So this mm -hmm. is the journey. There are people who are still stuck on stupid. Mm -hmm. And they're operating mostly from the instinctive drives, the command center, the lower command center that says just mm -hmm. exist biologically. Mm -hmm. So when those people don't grow above and beyond those instincts, they are the ones who become the diehard materialists of this world. And many of those people, that type, are ruling the planet as we speak. Mm -hmm. And they're doing it with big money. Yes, and yes. and huge amounts of power, unjustified power. Mm -hmm. And they are making decisions over what we will be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. So your World Economic Forum and, uh, you know, George Soros, that type. Yes. Klaus, you know, that type is mm -hmm. that's the type I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do in a short sentence is meet the challenge of that growth. We have a decision to make as human beings. Mm -hmm. We can either remain in that default setting, which allows for circumstances to dictate our fate, or we can grow up to the level of emotional and intellectual decision-making. Those two things work together, your emotions and your mind, your intellect. And we can then consciously chart the future of our progress and actually determine for ourselves what will be our destiny. Because destiny, doctor, it occurs when we allow for a pre-planned existence. And that pre-planned existence, which we work out intellectually, we can mm -hmm. work it out intellectually. Mm -hmm. And it results in a situation that we call life. Mm -hmm. So unless you are pre-planning -pre your destiny, 
the destination, al akhirah, meaning from this mm -hmm. moment forward, not after you die. You wait till you die, you're in trouble. <laughs> yes. right. You have to pre-plan it. And how are we pre-planning it? We need guidance. Yes. So how do we know what we're supposed to be planning for? Because it's in El Huda. El Huda. Yeah. It's in the guidance. Yeah. This is not guesswork. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Allah has already worked it out for you. He created you. He knows every nuance of your creation, of your uh, wants and needs and yeah. desires and hopes and yeah. aspirations. Allah knows every single instance of that. So we have to go to the guidance. Allah gave us the table of contents and the book. Mm -hmm. So you, you don't even have to stop on a chapter that's not really addressing your concerns. You just look through mm -hmm. the table of contents called the Quran. You look for that mm -hmm. subject matter. You say, oh, okay, here's the guidance that I'm supposed to be following. And if I follow this guidance, Allah tells you that the majority of the world is in trouble. I'm paraphrasing again the surah called al Asr. Sure. The entire world is in trouble, except for, say, those who express faith, those who have expressed faith and do deeds of reconciliation, good deeds of reconciliation. And then it goes on to describe a few other attributes of these, this type. These people are patient. They're constant. You see? So if mm -hmm. you're that, then Allah says you are not in the group that's going to hell. Yes. Even though he says the whole world is going to hell. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful language when you understand it. Yes, so yes, you can choose to be singular and unique in this world because the whole world is going to smash. As my, my wife likes to say, the whole world is going <laughs> to smash. Yes, it doesn't yes. mean you have to share that ride. That's correct. You can see that car reaming out of control and just let it bypass you. Step yes, out of the so street, step out of the way. You you can be that young lady who refuses to get into the car with yes it goes husband. right back to that original point that's right yeah so there you go that becomes your destiny mm -hmm. that becomes your destiny see so yes. basically what we're talking about in a nutshell is whether you follow God or not as the Christians use as a term God we say Allah. It mm -hmm. all boils down to whether you follow God. We keep talking about salat as some physical ritual, and it has nothing mm -hmm. to do with a physical ritual as such. It has to do with routines, but not rituals. Mm -hmm. And as I always like to distinguish rituals from routine, rituals are those things that are done that have no perceivable value or benefit. Mm -hmm. See? They say, oh, well, if I perform the physical salat, you know, at least you're getting exercise, instructor Bilal. Well, then I might as well do yoga. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, more, it's more involved mm -hmm. physically than yes. five minutes worth of uh, bending and bowing and that kind of thing. Yeah. We're not understanding that Allah is speaking to the internal person when he gives mm -hmm. us the rules for the routine that's called mm -hmm. salat. If I brush my teeth routinely, if I take a shower and a bath routinely, it has a perceivable benefit at the end of the practice. Yes. That's the difference between a routine, which you it has an obvious uh, benefit. Mm. A routine, getting up early in the morning, doing work in the yard. Those are the, people might say, "Oh, you, those are rituals." No, those are routines because you're getting a benefit at the end yes. of it. Yes, yes. But a routine is just something that you're doing for your own personal pleasure. And Allah doesn't need your routine. Uh, pardon me. Allah doesn't need your, your ritual. A ritual is something that you're doing for your own individual pleasure. Allah doesn't need your ritual. Allah tells you there's nothing that you can give to him. Mm -hmm. Nothing. So even if you go back to the Christian and the Jewish teachings of the Bible, it's going to have as an emphasis the idea of following God. It's mentioned all throughout the Bible in many different verses. Allah says in the Bible, you shall follow my rules. Yeah. <laughs> See, yeah. Allah tells them that they turned away from following the Lord, who mm -hmm. is the God of their fathers. They were following their fathers, just like the Arabs mm -hmm. were. See, mm -hmm. so the whole thing about following the commandments, you know, we talk about the Ten Commandments and these other things in the Bible. All of this represents what the Quran calls as salat following and staying connected 
following closely and staying connected with the source creator. Well, how do you do that? You have to stay connected with the guidance. That's correct. That's correct. You see? So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to stop there and let you jump in. I have a few more things to say before we conclude, but I want to hear from you now. Okay, well, let me see if I can't modify those statements. Um, because what you've just gave us as a response to my initial inquiry uh, has tied a lot of loose ends together for me. Um, especially this, this, the concept of guidance. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find the right words to put it together here, but I'll try. Um, the whole thing you just said, we'll close with that statement here. I'll open with this. Your closing statement, the whole thing is about guidance, you see, yes. to maintain guidance, to maintain us a lot. But this guidance, in my experience, is something that you can't always see beforehand. Sometimes the guidance comes while you're actually taking the step. And all that guidance does is confirm that you're going, your foot's going to land on solid ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some, it's like that, okay? Yes. So that requires a bit more than just willingness, okay? It uh, requires a bit more than what uh, people call faith. We'll talk about that word in just a minute again. It requires certainty. Ooh, ooh, yeah. I mean, you know, you're let's okay. Let's just say I'm, you know, some sort of contortionist, or I'm, I can I, I create uh, delusions and illusions, and people just believe, you know, my sleight of hand. Well, you you can do that, but you don't require you just require cunning to do that. Yeah. To to that just requires cunning. It doesn't require faith, mm -hmm. and it faiths. This kind of the mo the kind of faith that most people have is well, okay. Well, they have faith in God, they have faith in the hereafter, but they don't have faith in the present because <laughs> they've lost hope. All right, so let's let me tie that in now. This this idea of lost hope because there's a saying, I think, in one of the apostles, it may have been Paul. He said, uh, "Faith is the substance of things hoped for." Yes. Now, I happen to like that that um, that that phrasing, and I like that. Um, um, interpretation because it makes perfect sense faith let me start with faith faith is the substance oh so faith is substance no faith faith is the substance of what what do you mean substance of what you hope for okay so if you're hoping that means you're consciously you consciously uh intellected something then then you've made a conscious decision to follow that something Okay, but you're saying at the same time, God, I don't know how to follow you. Mm. God says, look, you got the commandments. I'll give you the rest mm. along the way. Mm -hmm. All right. That's what I've learned. The commandments is just a place to start. That helps you maintain the, the, the connection. Yes. Keeping the commandment just helps you maintain the connection. Because once you, hey, once you go visit that titty bar, your connection's done. <laughs> Okay, you're gonna have to. You're, you're gonna have to. Yeah, you're gonna have to turn around and do some sort of talba and say, "Oh, oh God, boy. immediately!" I've just disconnected myself. Yeah, you know, it's bad enough you disconnect yourself from from your wife, but you disconnect <laughs> yourself from guidance, man. Oh, my you goodness. might as well just jump in that big old boiling cauldron called fate. You might just yeah. dive head first into it. Yeah. yeah okay. So, yeah. so keeping the commandments is just uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's just dropping the dimes. In the mm -hmm. phone call, so you main you maintain mm -hmm. you maintain mm -hmm. salat. Mm -hmm. Salat is the maintenance maintenance of what the connection that's going to allow you to be guided. Yes. All right. You already got the you already got the uh, the moral and ethical rules. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's where you start. Yes. All right, and that's where you stand. But if you want to walk, you need that guidance. Yes. <laughs> you need that yeah. guidance. Mm -hmm. Okay. I hope that's an analogy that helps to tie this in. So faith is a substance of things hoped for. Oh, this substance, what am I hoping? I'm hoping to meet my destiny. Yes. I am not hoping to meet my fate. Right. Okay. And now, because I made the conscious decision to be what the army because be all you can be. Yes. I want to be all I can be under the kingship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes. our source creator. Yes. So that's a very big differential 
you know, this fate versus fate versus destiny thing. My, this is this is this requires consciousness, and then you have to overcome these instinctive feelings. Okay, well, you know they're there. Well, what do you go? What do you mean? I got to overcome hunger. You got to learn what to eat that's going to be good for you. Yes. Okay. Or you're going to learn how to limit what the boundaries are if you're going to eat something that's not good for you. Because there's something out there that's going to cure you. You eat too much of it becomes a poison. So we got it's a learning process. So we're learning to what? Um, we're learning to discipline these lower drives. Yes. That's becoming caliph of the nafs, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Of course it is. <laughs> this then we're then we're we're becoming the risen Christos. We're oh, becoming man. Michelangelo's Vitruvian man. We need an extra hey, hour. We need an extra we can, hour. <laughs> we can we can pivot. We can pivot on that Vitruvian man and then we make a right step forward. That's it. Oh my God. That's right. You see what you've just done here? Man, I think we I just took care that. of that can of worms, man. Yeah, we did. We did. <laughs> They're fine dying and laid on this side now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, all right. So that I, uh, you say you've got something else you want to add to it before yeah. we close up. Yeah. I, I, I want to just uh, give a short elaboration on a surah that's very popular uh, sure. in the Quran called El Kalthar. Mm. And many Muslims, it's only three ayat. And many Muslims have memorized it for purposes of reciting their prayers and etc. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to give the traditional translation and then I'm going to give just some commentary on the last, well, yeah, two words actually. Mm -hmm. Definitely the last word. And Allah says, to thee have we granted the fount of abundance. That's how they translate uh -huh. it, Kalthar. Mm -hmm. And it says, therefore, to your Lord, turn in prayer and sacrifice. <clears throat> and then the last of those three ayat says, for he who hates you, he will be cut off from future hope. Now, the word for being cut off and they put in brackets from future hope mm. is abatar, A-B-T-A-R, abatar. And it's from an Arabic verb, batara. Now, folks don't have to remember that, but I'm saying it for purposes of connecting connecting it to an, a very well-known English word. <clears throat> so here's your consonantal connections and lunetics in a nutshell. Unintended, you know, seed letters in sure. a nutshell. Yeah. In uh, nutshell. <laughs> uh, um, mm -hmm. Batara means to be cut off or to cut off a thing before it's completed. That's fate, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, yes. um, it means uh, to be without offspring or progeny. Mm -hmm. It means to be defective or deficient, to be imperfect. So all mm -hmm. of this is pointing to fatalism. Yes, yes. And, uh, you know, there are people who are actually going around on a daily basis as fatalists in their minds. They're, 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 yes. they're, they're actually attracting fate. Yes. They don't realize it, but they are actually calling for something bad to happen to them. Yes. Yeah. This is the kind of thinking that leads to depression, leads to over anxiety, leads to an over amount of stress. Mm -hmm. Because all of those things are based on fear. And fear is the idea of responding to something that has not yet happened. Mm -hmm. And most of the time that we assume what's going to happen, that's bad. It's usually not as bad as we thought <laughs> if we had thought things out. So all of these things are part of that avatar experience that uh, being cut off, being cut mm -hmm. off from what? Being cut off from the fitra, which is being cut off from your true relationship with your Rabb, with, with Allah. Yes, Yes, and, yes. and that's in our hands. Now, the truer explanation of this surah is this, that without doubt, in I take nakel kalthar, without doubt, we have granted you the fount of abundance, el kalthar. <clears throat> Therefore, fasalli, listen to that word. That's the same mm -hmm. root where you get the word salah. Mm -hmm. Fa, therefore, that suddenly 
they translate it as therefore pray and sacrifice. No, it has nothing to do with a physical ritual. Fesoli mm -hmm. means therefore follow the direction. Mm -hmm. Connect yourself to the directives yes. that were laid down by your Rabb. See? Fesoli li Rabbi Kelledi. Fesoli bi Rabbi ke. Mm -hmm. right. Follow the direction and follow the directives of your Robert, the one who is evolving and sustaining you. Right. Uh, then it says one har, meaning one har means and they say sacrifice. One har doesn't mean sacrifice. It's mm -hmm. one. It's one nahar. Nahar is the is the standard word in the Arabic language for river. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nahar river. But it mm -hmm. has to be a river that continues to flow. Yes. So when you think about a river that flows, you mm -hmm. begin to also think about uh, disbursement. The, mm -hmm. the river is responsible. If you put something on there, they put Moses on the river, yes, according yes. to both books. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. floated up the river towards Misr or Egypt. Mm -hmm. So he was being dispersed. He was being sent mm -hmm. on his mission. But what was mm -hmm. motivating that mission was him being put on the river and the river was dispersing him. Almost like goods, yes. like a ship does on the sea. Yes, it was yes. it, it, yeah, so it's talking about how you channel your disbursements. In mm -hmm. other words, follow the directives, but don't just say I'm following the guidance. The guidance is beckoning you to move in a particular direction and that direction should result in you dispersing of all of the goods that Allah mm -hmm. gave you mm -hmm. to give out for other people who are in need like you were in need. Mm -hmm. See? And then the last uh, line says, without doubt, those, meaning those people are those things that shaniaka, that insult you, will be cut off. Mm -hmm. Without doubt, those that insult you, that hate you, that despise you, it is they who will be cut off. Allah mm -hmm. uses that phrase twice. Certainly those who hate you, they will be cut. So in other words, if somebody spoke to you like that, Mm -hmm. He would automatically know that there was a different narrative going on. And Allah yeah. was correcting the narrative that they yes, were telling yes. you that you're being cut off yes. because you don't have the mountains of gold. You don't have, yes. you know, all of the silver. You don't, you don't yes, have of all course. of the big homes and mansions and the, you know, mm -hmm. and the, whatever the Mar-a-Lago, whatever, you know, all of those yes. stuff that, you know, we look at it, we go, gee, I wish I had that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you think you've been cut off. Mm -hmm. But Allah is saying, no, if you do my prescription, channel my disbursements, I've given you a, abundance. Yes, yes. Are you sharing that abundance? I've given you an abundance. Look at us. See what we're mm -hmm. doing and have been doing for how many classes? I think it's our 47th, mm -hmm. 48th class. I we are count. I lost count. dispersing what Allah has given us. Yes, yes. This We're coming from the Kalthar that Allah has deposited within us. Mm. And Allah is letting us know, don't, don't be ashamed of it. Don't be, uh, you know, despondent or anything that mm -hmm. I've given you what's necessary for the ongoing uh, uh, perpetuation of the life that I desire. Yes. For you mm -hmm. and for others. Those other yes. guys that you've been raising your eyebrows over. Wow. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who are going to be cut off. Yes. We see yes. it beginning to happen in real time in our life as we speak. So, mm -hmm. so we have to create, like the river, we have to create channels. That's what they say rivers run in channels. We have to create mm -hmm. channels of goodness, charities. Mm -hmm. And those charities begin with our families. Mm -hmm. See how it all yes. comes back home? It yes. begins with Mahdi. You see, it begins with Amina. It begins with yes. Karima. It begins with my mm -hmm. eight children plus three from Karima. Yes, That's where course. my charities began. And when I followed mm -hmm. that prescription, as Allah ordered it in the Quran, mm -hmm. yes. my life began to, talking about Fatiha, opening up. Mm -hmm. My life yes. began to just open up, open up, open up.
So yes, lastly, yes. I'll say this, that they say that Kalthar represents the river of abundance. Let's say something about the word abundance and I'll be through. Mm -hmm. It comes from the word abound mm -hmm. and it carries what you and I have discussed on many occasions as the A of negation, meaning that when the letter A is used in the beginning of many of these words in both Arabic and English, it negates whatever word comes after it. It cancels yes. out the word that comes after it. So mm -hmm. in the word abundance and abound, the word bound comes after the A, a bound. And mm -hmm. if it's negating it, then what it is actually saying is that <clears throat> it is not bound. Mm -hmm. yes, it's not, not limited. Yes. The abundance mm -hmm. that Allah is going to give you is not binding or bound to any particular mm -hmm. time and space and or somebody else's dictates when they want you to have it. No, it's when Allah wants to grant it to you. He says, certainly we have granted you the fount of abundance. That means there's going to be no limits. Mm -hmm. You can have Marla, though, if you want it, if you think that's going yeah. to help you do better da'wah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. But you can also gain moral, spiritual, and intellectual growth and purity. Yes and share that that's the better share it's the yes. good it's the guidance that's the gps that's going to get us to the destiny you need a gps we used yes. to guess our way to where we were going and yes. hope that we made the right <laughs> hope we made the right <laughs> yes and mm -hmm. then allah said i'm gonna put a major ayat in the world in the form of this gps mm -hmm. <laughs> and all they have to do yeah because it's is it's, it's cosmic mm -hmm. it's being regulated by the satellites mm -hmm. that which is above your head so just tune your little gadget into what is going to give you sure guidance, not definite, not, it doesn't mean it's going to work that way every single time. As you said, mm -hmm. there's going, there's going to be some, you know, some okay, so we're kind of, we're kind of tuning these horns. Then, yeah. Right? Yeah. Kinda like Ant's antenna. Up yeah. There. The antenna. Yeah. Like yeah. we used to do with our old television and then sets. Say, you know, and then <laughs> at one point in our life, they go. Bleh, yeah. Bleh, like a bleh. Geiger counter that found it's gold like in my, the sand. My favorite Martians going off. Bleh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was my favorite show too. My favorite Martian. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, Tell so, that, so that's, that's, mm -hmm. ba that's basically, that's basically how it goes. Um, uh, let me just say, to, at, at, just to put a concluding stamp on, on, on this idea Please. of the river, mm -hmm. Nunetics is, as you know, the science of comparing uh, letters from the same, that are pronounced from the same category of the mouth, comparing them and, and exchanging them in words. So the word river has mm -hmm. the consonants R, V, R, if I'm remembering correctly. Mm -hmm. And V interchanges with B as a labial, a lip sound. Mm -hmm. And R interchanges with L as a liquid sound <clears throat> in the mouth. So R V R can also be R B L, which gives mm -hmm. you the word for rebel. Mm -hmm. So a river is a rebel. Mm -hmm. A river mm -hmm. is in the business of constantly exchanging what was there yesterday with what it wants to be there today so what am i saying mm. the abundance that allah has given us if we appropriate it correctly and disperse it to where it's supposed to be going according to allah's huda mm -hmm. according to allah's guidance it's going to cause us to be rebels yes in a world yes. that wants you to remain stagnant ah yeah i was that, just going to say the, the, the imagination i immediately have is this is this river is not stagnant. It is not phlegmatic. It is That's dynamic. Right. That's so right. it's, it can't sit someplace and just get fat. No, not become polluted, it's, corrupted. No, it can't. Isn't it has to move. It's a dynamic, dynamic, constant movement. Yes, and indeed. that's why people who are new, 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 if we're if you're locked in, okay, yes. you're never you're never bored. That never, never. no such thing. It, it can't happen. Never. Never oh, depressed man. in the way that they describe depression. Never. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, it, no. It's a beautiful. Yeah. And when you understand that water represents your moral life, <clears throat> the moral decisions yeah. that you make that keep mm. you clean. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, water also represents your emotional life because yes. there's a yearning for emotional purity and clarity. We want clarity yes. emotionally. Yes. You love me or do you love me not? So let me know so I can get the hell on if you ain't really feeling like yeah. I'm feeling. Right. So 
that river, Kalthar, is representing all of these things, your moral choices. They have to remain flowing. You have to constantly mm -hmm. be thinking about what's morally correct, what's mm -hmm. emotionally appropriate. Should I feel this way? Should I not feel this way toward this mm -hmm. person? See? And when you keep that river flowing, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. become a rebel to everything that, as we said, wants to keep you stagnant. Yes. Wants to keep you, what's that other uh, body of water? Swamp. You know, they want to keep yes, you in yeah. the swamps. Yes. Right? Yeah. When we're intended to be that which carries cargo to other places that yes. need sustenance. It's beautiful. So thank you for today. I appreciate that. Yes, alhamdulillah. God bless the cargo. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's carry this on. I want to take it off again next week uh, with the concept of being cut off. Oh, okay. boy. Yeah. Yeah, let's uh, let's carry through with that, yeah, inshallah. Wassalamu yeah. alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And may Allah continue to exchange our battery power for electric power. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so it won't. Be, it'll never be cut off. Not as long as you stay plugged mm. in or connected. <laughs> That's right. I well, gotta stay plugged in, man. Right. Here's the staying plugged in, man. It is. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, my favorite Martian. <laughs> <laughs>